All right, what's up guys? So was that a clickbait title? Unfortunately, it wasn't. And I didn't really do anything, but the transmission blew up and Basically what happened is I drove to Santa Cruz and drove home in one day with my wife and it drove fine. There was no indication that anything was wrong. And then the next day I went to run an errand and I noticed as I was driving, it was kicking out of overdrive and it was just like downshifting and revving really high. And then when I came to a stop, it slipped really bad and slammed into gear. And I was like, all right, Something's not right. So I took it to my friend Hunter who owns a shop in town called JNS East Valley Garage. And I got the bad news. The transmission grenaded. And initially I was like, is this something I did? Was it the 35s? Was it the re-gearing? Was it the off-roading? And ultimately it was not my fault, but I'm sure all of that did put some extra stress onto it. But unfortunately I found out that basically it had never been maintained before I got it. And I ended up buying this van from my work and I thought that they had done maintenance to it. And I know that they had done oil changes and all the regular engine stuff, but it turns out they'd never maintained the transmission. The transmission had never been serviced. The filters had never been changed. And we know that because the Ford factory plug that goes in the dipstick for the transmission fluid was in the pan. And typically whenever you drop the pan to change a filter or do a full transmission service, the tech would just take that out. There's no reason to leave a plastic plug in there. So that was a main indicator that it had never been serviced and it had about 100,000 miles on it. So in 100,000 miles, it had never been maintained, never had the filters changed and I had always just kind of assumed that Ford Econolines maybe had kind of a slushy transmission, not real crisp shifts. I just assumed that that's how they drove because my Quigley 4x4 E350 kind of, you know, shifted similarly. So I just assumed that's the way it was. And it's definitely not the way the transmission should be shifted. So basically what happened was the clutches started to go out, the torque converter clutches started to go out and it started just kind of spitting material into the transmission. And it kind of went from the front drum to the planetary drum to the back drum. And it was just fine metal shavings, just kind of grinding through all of that. And that is ultimately what made it fail. And it was still drivable when I drove it to the shop, but it was not drivable in the sense that you could go daily drive it and it would be okay. And the bearing in the planetary drum, uh, it's, it's somewhat of a common failure in these transmissions, but the material had just completely clogged up the cooler, all the lines, everything. So we kind of had to do a whole overhaul and I weighed the advantages and disadvantages of just buying a junkyard transmission because these were put in a million different vehicles, but ultimately I decided I'd rather have it be completely overhauled on the bench and upgraded at the same time. So basically the guys at the shop dropped the transmission, got it on the bench and completely overhauled it. They used all, you know, OEM good parts. And then they did do a few upgrades. They upgraded the clutch packs, the heavy duty clutch packs. They did heavy duty planetary gears and a big heavy duty transmission cooler which my van did have an auxiliary cooler, which is good. But like I said earlier, it was completely clogged with metal shavings and material. So there was no sense in trying to clean it out. It was just easier to just get a bigger and better transmission cooler. So now I know that my transmission is not gonna be a weak point. It's going to be completely dialed and I'm gonna be adding a tuner to it. So the van knows what gearing I have and what tires I have, which should help with, you know, any sort of shifting issues it may have, but right now it drives amazing. It's like a new vehicle. And I know I've said that a few times about different things I've done, but this is one that is very, very, very noticeable. It's 
completely different driving around town. It shifts smooth. You know it's shifting. There's no mushiness. It's it's just a better van now. And so as much as it sucks that I had to go through this and I had to spend all this money, I'm very grateful for the guys at the shop and for their advice and their guidance. And you know, that's kind of why I didn't go through buying a used one. Like, yeah, it would have been cheaper, but it could have had these same issues. So I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to have to do this again. So it was really one of those buy once, cry once situations. And yeah, it's just, it kind of is what it is. And I don't really know what else to say. It's, it is a bummer, but you know, we got the van for a great deal and this is just kind of an operating expense, I guess. All right, and real quick, I'm gonna take a break from kind of talking about the van and I just wanna showcase Hunter's shop a little bit. It's such a cool space, especially here in Santa Barbara. I feel like it's a really, really rare gem, basically. It's so old school and they do everything the right way. They don't cut corners and they're super informative. Like, I'm not paid by them at all. Uh, Hunter is a friend of mine and I just kind of want to show my support to him and kind of show the stuff that they work on. They do all kinds of crazy custom fabrication. They do hot rod stuff, race car stuff, off-roading and overland vehicles. He always worked on my Tacoma. I'm going to show you guys kind of a little bit around the shop and talk to Hunter for a second. And then, um, yeah, I'll uh, give you guys some final thoughts on what I think about the van. All right, so this is Hunter. He's the owner and operator of JNS. You want to give us a little history about the shop? Yeah, the shop here has been on location as original since 1919. I'm the fourth owner. Uh, the owner before me had it since 1962, Jay Roach, who was my mentor. I bought the shop in 2012 after working here since 2002. And yeah, we try and be on our best behavior, try and keep the neighborhood happy, but you can see Everything is kind of piecemealed together from old barn doors and different things like that when the original owner built it. And uh, yeah, it's we've been here a long time. We hope to stay in business and keep everybody in the neighborhood happy. And what's this? You were kind of telling me a little bit about this earlier. This is an all aluminum Keith Black and Chrysler Hemi. So this is a factory dual plug Chrysler original uh, cylinder head. They're kind of unique. They were developed during NASCAR. Uh, for dual plug uh, configuration. Some guys used them in the top fuel cars. Uh, basically, this is going to be a street freak, um, mostly for show. It's going to have dual magnetos. It's going to have eight stack EFI injection on it. Um, again, all billet aluminum crank, pretty much all top fuel stuff. And then yeah, he's going to drive it on the street and, you know, scare some people, hopefully. So Sweet. All right, what's up guys? I uh, just leaving Hunter's shop and I kind of wanted to just film a little bit inside the van as I'm driving and talk about just how much better it is. It's honestly crazy. I, uh, I guess I never realized just how messed up the transmission was. I kind of just always assumed that Ford Econolines maybe had a little bit of a slushy transmission and like, you know, shifts were kind of soft and I don't know, I just didn't really assume anything was wrong, but you know, hindsight's always 2020, and you know, now that I'm driving it with a totally upgraded and rebuilt transmission, it's like a whole new vehicle, and it's not an exaggeration. The shifts are crisp, you feel them, they're there, you know, it's just like very obvious how bad it was before, so very grateful to the guys at the shop and if you're ever looking for any sort of fabrication work you know you need your overland or off-road vehicle worked on or any kind of car i i suggest going and talking to hunter and tommy and you know the other guys at the shop they're super helpful uh they're not the kind of people to just kind of tell you you know this is what it's going to cost they will explain why and what's going on and you know some alternatives so I, you know, I'm, I'm not paid by them at all. Uh, Hunter is a good friend of mine. Uh, we've gotten pretty, you know, close over the last few years and he's helped me out a bunch. And, you know, I just felt like it'd be cool to kind of showcase the shop and, you know, kind of show the stuff they're doing. I think it's super unique that a guy as young as Hunter is like 
doing this land speed kind of top fuel, I don't know, top speed race stuff. Uh, it's a whole other world to me. I don't know anything about it, but uh, I think it's awesome. And yeah, I just want to say if uh, your Ford Econoline isn't shifting very well, feels kind of mushy, not real crisp shifts, you might have a problem. So now that the transmission's out of the way, I'm going to be focusing on some other mods. Uh, there's a lot coming soon and I look forward to making some more videos and showing you guys the process. So if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate if you hit the like button. I know you hear that all the time on YouTube and definitely subscribe. I'm going to be trying to update you guys every single week, whether it's a bike video, a van video, a camping video, whatever it is, I'm trying to produce content every week for you guys. So any kind of support you can give me would be greatly appreciated. See you on the next one.